hey y'all what's up okay so now that you've gone over yesterday all that good review stuff about rhyme and rhythm and simile metaphor uh rhyme scheme uh sensory language i want you to push that all the way back to the back of your head when we really read poems especially eighth grade and on when we really read poems we try to enjoy the experience of the poem and we focus less on the parts that it's made up of, like similes, and we focus more on the full experience. So keep those words in mind, but we are not going to be analyzing these poems today using that vocabulary. I just wanna see what you guys think, because that's how poems really work. Instead of focusing on the parts today and for the rest of our poetry unit, I want you guys to make sure that you're focusing on the bigger picture and the bigger emotions, the bigger message. So. Some of the things that I absolutely love about poetry, it's not the similes or the sensory language. It's that when you write poetry, it's sort of like going on a journey where you don't know how it's going to end. And you know that you're the one that's making up the rules as you go. All those rules that you have about paragraphs and periods and grammar go out the window when you write poetry and creativity is celebrated. In fact, thinking outside the box and breaking rules is celebrated, which is awesome. You can still follow those rules, but you get to decide when to follow them. It's also a great chance when you're writing it to take a moment to just be still and really look inside at what you're feeling. Don't worry how something sounds when it comes out, just let it come out, see what happens. One of the reasons I like to read poetry is because it is one of the most direct ways to experience humanity, in my opinion. We connect with other people. Poetry lets us know when we read it that we're not alone, that we are connected to all of humanity and these deep feelings and thoughts that we have. I feel like it's a much more direct way to the heart sometimes than reading an essay or even reading a novel might be. There's something very just powerful and moving about some poetry. So as we read our two poems today, uh, both of them have a strong emphasis on empathy or putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. I want you to focus on just enjoying the experience and pay attention, sure, to how the author does the lines. Um, but mostly I want you guys to enjoy the experience. So here we go. This one is called Drum Beat for Change by Kelly Starling Lyons. This world feels upside down sometimes, like a twisted house of mirrors where people in charge are bullies, where protesters of racism are pummeled, where being who you are can put your life on the line. What do we do with the worry, the hurt, the rage? We turn it into something bigger than us we turn it into change. Together, we are a mountain that no one can destroy. Having faith doesn't mean that we are fearless. It means that we believe and press on toward love, toward equality, toward a safer, stronger future. We press on and stay true to what we know is right. Throughout history, kids like you were right there with picket signs, and petitions with heart and humility with bravery and brilliance they changed this world for the better and you will too tell your story to anyone who will listen to hear it yourself you matter you matter you matter the drumbeat of hope will always drown out the howls of hate can you hear it can you feel it Say it with me and believe. I matter. I matter. I matter. Beautiful you. I am in awe of all you are and will be. When you feel angry or afraid, remember what you hold inside. Kindness, courage, compassion, the power of people who made a way out of no way, who persevered and toppled injustice, live in you, always. March to that drumbeat of hope. March and know you are never alone, standing up and speaking out, pressing for justice, having each other's backs. We will create change. 
I like the picture that they paired this with. Um, it's very reminiscent of leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. There are plenty of parts of this poem. We have repetition, right? Um, another puzzle piece, um, it, oh, lots of repetition, uh, the howls of hate. Um, that's alliteration, right? They both start with H's. Uh, we have some things that, that rhyme or partially rhyme like rage and change, but is that what makes it so powerful? What makes it so powerful is that this poet spoke from their heart and we feel it. So I want you guys to really look over this. You can pause the video um, or you can come back and I want you to see what makes this poem powerful to you in your opinion. Don't worry so much about the rhyming or the alliteration, but what is it that the author did that you noticed that you like or that stood out to you? So we're going to do another poem, a second poem, much shorter. Also about empathy, this time uh, not for people, but for animals. It's by the author Nikki Giovanni, and the name of this poem is Allowables. I killed a spider, not a murderous brown recluse nor even a black widow. And if the truth were told, this was only a small sort of papery spider who should have run when I picked up the book. But she didn't and she scared me and I smashed her. I don't think I'm allowed to kill something because I am frightened. This poem stands out in my mind a lot because of its name, allowables, like what is allowed. Are we allowed to kill insects? Sure. But she talks about what she should be allowed to do. And she says, I don't think I should be allowed to do that. So for this one, this is appealing to empathy, but in a different way. So same thing. I want to know to see, what do you notice that's like different about this poem from the last one? Look at its form, like the way the lines are done. Look at the line breaks. Um, look at some of the rules that are broken and uh, look at its meaning. So what do you guys think? So again, what I want you guys to walk away with is ultimately poems are about letting us see through other people's eyes, but also about finding our own humanity in each other. And I want you guys to focus more on the big picture. If you're writing a poem and you want it to be more powerful, absolutely remember those cool plays on words like similes and alliteration. But that is not what poetry is about. Poetry is ultimately about us and nothing less than the soul itself. All right, guys, I hope y'all enjoy. Um, tomorrow, you're going to get to read some of your own poetry by choice. Next week, you're going to try your hand at writing some. Bye for now.